Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Personally, big thank you as always to uh, everyone that watched last week's episode of the show. Um, liked, commented, all that kind of thing. Um, very, your support is very much appreciated. And it, it seems like you enjoyed last week's episode of the show, so hopefully you'll enjoy this week's. And as you can see from the title page, um, we're looking at rum. Do you know, I fancied a change. I fancied doing some rum, and I've had these samples of Gosling sat around now, well, since last December. Um, so they've been sat around waiting their turn patiently, and um, the samples were uh, kindly sent to me by the, uh, the the UK distributors love drink, so uh, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and I do apologise that it's taken so long to actually get round to reviewing them, but when I'm only doing one episode a week, it is... Um, oh, it's difficult. There's so many, so many things I would love to to review, and they just have to wait. I mean, I've got, as you well know, I've got little groups of samples dotted all the way around here. You know, just just waiting their turns. So um, anyway, so this week it's it's the turn of, uh, of Gosling's, and um, uh, from doing my my research into them, because I, I must admit I, I know. I, before I received the samples, I knew absolutely nothing about the uh, the, the, the company itself, and it's a, an interesting story, um, which begins in the spring of 1806 with uh, a chap called James Gosling, who was the son of William Gosling, a wine and spirits merchant, and he uh, planned to set out uh, to sail from uh, Gravesend in Kent on a ship called the Mercury to uh, to the United States with. Uh, a large amount of merchandise, obviously, to sell and uh, make a profit. And um, the interesting thing is that the uh, the amount of money's worth of, of merchandise that he took with him was ten thousand pounds, which it's still quite a large amount of money even today. But um, you know uh, that the value of that merchandise in today's money and. I just love that terminology in today's money, as if today's money is somehow different to money back in 1806, which of course it isn't, but obviously the inflationary pressure means that um, the value of £10,000 worth of goods uh, today would be exactly uh, £903,367.15. And I know that because I looked it up on a website. Um, well, which I'm, and I'm assuming the website was correct, but because um, you should never assume anything online is correct. But anyway, um, it's an awful lot of money. And as uh, he was the son of a wine and spirits merchant, I would imagine that some of that, of that, um, some of those goods must have been probably some wine, maybe some spirit in cask, you know, cognac, armagnac, or brandy, or port, or something of that kind of ilk. And um, so the plan was to sail to the USA and sell all of this stuff for, for a profit. Uh, unfortunately, things didn't quite go according to plan, and it took a little bit longer than anticipated to get to the States. Well, in fact, it never actually got to the States. The charter ran out uh, after um, 91 days, and he still hadn't got to the States, so they had to put into the closest port, which happened to be uh, St. George's in Bermuda. And one assumes that he sort of obviously unloaded all his uh, merchandise and started selling it there. Um, and in 1824, uh, rented a shop uh, in um, the new capital of Hamilton. Um, the, the shop was originally on um, Front Street, and uh, I, I, I believe there's still a, 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 um, a Gosling shop in in. The capital, but I, don't, I think it's probably moved uh, location since uh, since then. But anyway, so uh, like I said, what, one assumes that some some of the merchandise was probably wine and spirits, and and obviously they had an interest in in, in spirits and wine, and um, must have thought that there was a market for for rum uh, in Bermuda and and you know probably uh, you know the shipping it to the states and stuff like that. So um, in eight 1860, I believe, the first barrels of Caribbean rum uh, arrived in Bermuda and they set about um, creating a blend. Now, um, this, uh, obviously, the, the, the most well-known um, blend or brand, if you like, is, uh, is the, the Black Seal. Uh, which allegedly is pretty much the same as it was back in the 1800s. And well, I'm not going to argue with that, it probably is. And um, uh, the 
the interesting thing is that uh, there's not enough arable uh, land in Bermuda, so they, they can't grow sugarcane, so it's not distilled in Bermuda, hence why they source the spirit from uh, other islands in the Caribbean. And the, one of the interesting things is that I would have thought that uh, labelling wise that they would have had to have labelled it as a Caribbean rum. But in actual fact if you look at, I don't know whether you can see that, um, but if you look at the bottle, and I'm sure you can find a picture of the bottle online, it actually says uh, Bermudan rum, or rum or Bermuda or whatever, um, which is strictly not true. And I would have thought that, well, it obviously soon appears that the rum uh, labelling regulations, certainly in Bermuda, are very similar to the, the labelling rules uh, of uh, Japanese whiskey. As long as the, the spirit has spent some time in Japan and is bottled in Japan, you can call it Japanese whiskey. And it's always, I've always been amazed that the Japanese distillers um, you know, haven't made more of a fuss about that uh, with regards to sort of like pressurising the government into at least having maybe a two-tier system where you have um, say Japanese distilled whiskey and Japanese bottled whiskey you know but you know anyway I, I digress anyhow so um, the so the, the, the rum is called Bermudan rum yeah like I said it's it's a blend of, uh, of, of Caribbean rums and um, it's it, another interesting part of the story I suppose is that the in this current sort of like you know um, globalized world that we live in a lot of these kind of brands and uh, spirit brands are now owned by big faceless corporations really and it's nice to know that Gosling's is still a family-owned company and uh, according to the website um, it is run by the, uh, the seventh generation uh, and there are five members of the eighth generation that are actually working for the company so um, so yes, so from a, a purely kind of um, sort of personal level, it's nice to know that the company is still, you know, um, you know like Gauntley's still, you know, uh, run by, by the family. It's not sort of, you know, uh, Gosling's is not part of Diageo or uh, one of the other sort of like yeah, big, big um, uh, drinks companies. So, um, so yeah, I mean, to, to a lot of people that probably doesn't really mean an awful lot, but, you know, to me, I think that is... The, I think that it is an important aspect of it. Um, obviously, the most important aspect is uh, how good is the juice in the bottle, but we shall obviously get to that in, in due course. Now, um, so, like I said, the most well-known brand is, is, is the, uh, the, the Black Seal rum, and um, uh, it initially, apparently, when, it was first, when they first launched this particular rum, it was just called Old Rum, and they sold it directly out of the barrel, and... That, that was it and um, eventually when they started to bottle it they started apparently to use old ex uh, champagne bottles I'm assuming obviously the, the company still had, were, had the, the uh, links to uh, the, the, the wine uh, trade and um, apparently the champagne was the favoured drink of uh, the, um, the the British naval officers um, so I imagine there was probably a, a ready supply of, of these these uh, bottles and so they were basically sort of they reused the bottles uh, and um, uh, sealed them with black wax um, and apparently this is where the name black seal came from um, how that then sort of became black seal as in the, the, the creature seal as, as on the label as a seal I don't know quite how they managed to get from that to that I mean I don't know whether Bermuda is renowned for seal colonies I don't know absolutely no idea but anyway so um, and when they when they launched the the family reserve old rum which is the, the last one in the, the samples that we'll be tasting uh, they decided that they were going to pay homage to this old champagne style bottle and so it is bottled in a, 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 a champagne style bottle with the black wax you know again nice box looks quite nice but uh, as we well know it's all about the juice and um, finally um, the, 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 the 
the, the website makes a big deal about its um, supposed versatility and here we go into the um, the sort of murky waters of, uh, of, of bartending and, and cocktails and all other kind of stuff and apparently it is a crucial component in what is known as dark and stormy which is a registered trademark apparently and you can buy it pre-made in in cans oh um yeah okay no 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 being a snob apparently um this iconic cocktail apparently um is um a refreshing mix of goslings ginger beer and fresh lime well it may well be and i'm I'm the wrong person to talk to about cocktails, as you well know. I prefer my, my spirits completely unadulterated. So, um, that's a little bit of, uh, a bit of history, a bit of information about the company. Um, I think it's probably now time to uh, take a look at the line. So, like I said, um, originally yeah, they were known for uh, the, the Black Seal rum, um, but, uh, and I've forget exactly when they decided to introduce a, a, a sort of well, a gold rum in actual fact I suppose you call it and that's what we're going to kick off with. Uh, this is the gold seal, it's bottled at 40%. Uh, it is a blend of column and pot still uh, distilled rum uh, aged up to five years and aged in first world war. And I assume that probably back in the day they bought rum in cask nowadays i would imagine logistics wise they probably buy it in bulk and it's probably tankered over to bermuda where it, they put it into cask and you know then mature it in bermuda um so as you can see it's got plenty of plenty of oak character uh, oak color now um and so like i said it's uh, five years old or up to five years old and uh, um so the next one we'll be looking at is indeed the eponymous uh, Black Seal, bottled at 40%. Now this is all aged in, uh, again, same blend, pot and column still, um, although it is uh, slightly older in so far that it is between three and six years of age and is aged uh, completely in recharred bourbon casks. And, well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I mean... Um, I've got a, a bourbon sample here, um, and the colour, well, it is a little darker, I will give you, um, so, uh, it, uh, yeah, I've got another one, yeah, uh, it is a little darker, I, I don't want to say there is definitely caramel in there, but, I mean, if there is, we will probably find it, but it certainly is quite dark for such a sort of a young spirit, whereas, I mean, well, obviously we'll get to this, the, the, the older one in, in, in due course. Um, so it's a possibility, but, you know, obviously we'll, we will possibly find that out when we taste it. Uh, the next bottling we're looking at is the uh, Black Seal 151 proof, which actually is 75.5%. Dear God. Um, that uh, is exactly the same, same um, blend as the, the Black Seal, but obviously this is the, the cask strength version. Um, so yes, three to six years old and 75%, um, dear God. Um, and the final bottle is the, um, the Family Reserve Old Rum, again, bottle of 40%. And um, again, a blend of uh, um, pot and column still. Uh, which has been aged in uh, Richard Bourbon, but this time considerably older. It is uh, between 16 and 20 years of age. And when you think about it, that's that's quite old. And it retails for, um, well, I've seen it online for 54.95, which is pretty good value for money, actually, for a, 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 a spirit of that kind of age. Um, so, but anyway, we'll obviously find out what it's like when we actually get around to tasting it. So I think I've spoken enough and I feel a bit of a dryness in my throat. So um, I think it's time to, to taste some rum. Right, okay, so we're kicking off with the gold seal. Now this is uh, inexpensive, it's uh, £22.45 apparently. Obviously I don't stock any of any of these, um, but you can find them online anyway. So um, let's see what the nose like. It's fairly simple, it's 
it's crisp, it's grainy, it's got a lot of column steel character, um, which I would imagine is the main proponent of, uh, or component I should say, of this blend. Um, there's not, I'm not getting an awful lot of, of, of pot steel richness. Um, I'm getting a reasonable amount of, um, of oak and um, it certainly has a, 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 a very much um, grain whiskey kind of character um, which is which is not a surprise at the end of the day it's a column distilled spirit and it's been aged in um, first fill American oak so um, there's obvious correlations I mean obviously the base materials are completely different but uh, it's it certainly feels like it's it's quite young it's not spirity it's just not particularly complex I can see this as an ideal mixing rum. Anyway, let's see what it passes like. It's pleasant. Um, straightforward. It's got a nice oily feel to it. Um, plenty of sweetness from the... Um, the American oak, a um, little bit of um, dried fruit, so again quite grainy, again pretty much predominantly um, column still spirit, young column still spirit, um, reasonable length, it, unpretentious, I mean you know it's 22 quid, uh, you know and, and you can't argue with that, I think the quality is, is certainly worth the price tag uh, and, it, and like I said it doesn't feel like it's trying to be anything other than it actually is and, and in reality it, it really is you know um, uh, destined for cocktails at the end of the day so uh, but you know a nice a nice one to start with. Right okay so let's move on to the Black Seal so we're looking at slightly older rums in this particular bottling. And indeed, it does feel like it's got a little bit more maturity. It's woodier, herbal, darker, treacly, um, getting a lot more uh, pot still character. It's got some weight to it. Um, touch of licorice, grilled nuts, ginger, pepper, a little bit of camphor as well. I must admit, I'm not picking up any unnatural caramel. Um, it doesn't feel particularly flattened. Um, there's a little bit of a bitterness, but I think that's more more oak bitterness than anything else. So I'm going to I'm going to say that I don't think there's very much caramel in there at all, if if any. But I, like I said, I, it is very dark, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised. But I think if they, if they do use a bit of caramel, they're, it's very judicious and uh, it certainly doesn't seem to impinge on the nose, should we say. Now, again, this isn't a particularly expensive rum. It's £23.75 online. Um, and yeah, again, it's okay. It's it's not setting my pants on fire, it has to be said. it's yeah, it's yeah, it, Quality is pretty reasonable, um, but yeah, it's not hugely um, complex um, and I suppose you could sort of say well you know for 23 quid it's you know it's not 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 too bad at all um, anyway let's see what passes up Well, it has a nice progression in actual fact. I mean, it starts off with more of the column still spirit. It certainly feels lighter to start off with. It's slightly grainy. Then I'm getting sort of wood spice, charred oak, um, treacle, a little bit of coffee, a little bit of camphor, um, a little bit of bitter tannins kind of coming through in the middle. And then I'm getting in comes the, column, uh, the pot still notes, the richer, uh, treacly, darker, weightier spirit. Um, there is a sweetness there. Um, it's a possibility that this is 
sweetened post distillation, a little bit like sort of um, say Diplomatico. Um, it certainly has more sweetness than I would expect. Um, so yes, possible a little bit of sweetness, but again, it's 23 quid. It's not bad. It's not horrible. It's not so, sort of, you know, spirity for, for an obvious, for a big brand. And I don't know how much, um, you know, what the volumes of Gosling's rum sold are, but you know, it's not a, a small enterprise. Um, it's, it's perfectly pleasant. Yeah, nothing wrong with it at all, in my, in my opinion. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 151 proof then. Let's, let's see what the nose gives us on this then, shall we? Yeah, yeah, that's alcoholic. Um, I can smell that. Um, it's, there's a touch of treacle there. There's... Um, some herbal woody notes it's really tight it's similar to the obviously to the black seal well which is not a surprise considering it's the same apart from a higher proof um a bit more spice possibly i often find that higher abvs spirits do tend to sort of you know emphasize the uh, the spice a little bit more um yeah that's 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 intense let's see what the power's like Dry, alcoholic, quite bitter, quite spicy. Wow, yeah, I mean, that is alcoholic. I mean, that is intense. Uh, bitter, charred oak. Um, it is quite oak and, oak and, and alcohol, really. I mean, um, Jesus, the spices are incredible, it has to be said. I mean, that really is tongue tingling, and I can tell you that for a fact. Um, Again, it's it's like it's what well, it, it is pretty much like the Black Seal. It kind of kicks off with more of the uh, lighter column still, with the um, what feels like a bit of pot still coming through on the, on the finish. But I mean, it's really difficult to tell because you're just getting a mouthful of alcohol. Really, uh, I'm going to put a little drop of water with it now. Apparently, this uh, retails for thirty eight quid. Um, oh, yeah, fine, absolutely fine. Um, Again, you know, quality is not too bad, and I assume that you know if you stick that in a cocktail, it's you're probably still going to get you know quite a bit of um bit of punchy rum character, I imagine. Um, it's pretty much like the forty percent bottling now. Where, uh, when you put a little drop of water with it, it is um, like I said, sort of quite quite rich, quite herbal, quite dense. Um, let's see what the pass on that. likewise on the palate it's still got of quite an intensity but then i've obviously not put enough water to bring it right the way down to 40 percent it's probably <coughs> dear god um it's probably still in the 50s i would imagine judging by uh, what it's just done to me but um so uh but yeah it's it's pretty much identical in, in terms of sort of like you know flavor and character um <laughs> Finally, we're moving on to the Family Reserve Old Rum. So, uh, bottled at 40% and um, 16 to 20 odd years old. So, and like I said, retails for, you know, just 54 95 I mean, that's a nice nose, actually. I mean, that has got some, some maturity. It's got a real toasty oak character. Um, marzipan, burnt spice, bourbony notes. Um, Dried fruit, treacle, smoke, touch of tar. The actual fact is very, very oaky. It really is oaky. Um, I'm just getting such a wave upon wave of toasty oak. Um, you know, real. So, I mean, I would. I mean, don't feel like recharred bourbon. I mean, it feels like there's a lot of fresh bourbon. Probably and and 
I would guess probably virgin oak as well. It certainly feels that way. It's got so much oak character. Um, I hate to say it's unbalanced, but it's got too much oak and um, well, yeah, it is, it is un unbalanced at the end of the day. Um, I'm not getting enough of the sort of the old rum character coming through it's kind of i mean yes it's a lovely lovely nose it's it's a sort of nose it that it, it's a crowd pleaser because of the oak and because of the sweetness and the vanilla um but there's more too much of that and, and not enough aged rum character i mean there's obviously some rum character there you can smell it but you know it's just just too much oak let's see what pass like It's wonderfully soft, but yet again, it's too much oak. Um, loads of vanilla, loads of toasty oak, um, quite grainy as well. I mean, yes, the, I, I get, I get a, a bit of um, a pot still character, um, but it's more a feeling of, of the weight rather than actual tasting pot still spirit. Um, and, and all the while, you, you just, that oak is just never... It's just still always there. It's just just too much, um, and it, yes, I can feel some. I I, I'm t I I get the impression of, of age and softness, um, and and but that's it. That's it's an impression, and I really honestly think that there's far far too much oak character here, and I would have rather them just dial down the oak a little bit and just allow more of the aged spirit to come through um, and I don't know maybe it's because the, the market they're aiming for I don't honestly know you know yes it's a crowd pleasing nose and palate because of the oak sweetness but um, for, for those that sort of and I hate to sort of say you know rum connoisseurs because it's such a such an arsey thing to say really isn't it at the end of the day but for those of us that love our rums and our rums that we love our rums unfettered uh, we want to see rum character we want to see spirit character I don't want just mountains of bloody oak you know um, because it's sort of yeah, yeah. anyway um, Quality, I you know, can't, I can't, I can't fault the quality. The quality is really good. It's just I, I'm just rather disappointed by by the end result at the end of the day. Okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big thank you to uh, Love Drinks again for uh, samples for today's episode of the show, and you know, I'm ho hoping that sort of Goslings don't think that I've been unduly harsh on their product um i think the gold seal is is is, is a perfectly pleasant rum it, not exactly sort of uh, over endowed with complexity shall we say but you know for for the money yeah i guess you can't go go wrong it's and like i said it's really sort of uh, an ideal mixer um the the black seal um yeah shows a little bit more uh, a little bit more complexity but get, but again it's not sort of like you know um, the sort of thing that you just could you're gonna go wow over you know I mean it's not expensive so again you have to sort of like say well you know is it worth the money and what well, you have to sort of say at the end of the day um, yeah it is worth you know 23 pounds 75 at the end of the day it's not a bad rum um, and you know we, we uh, you can not all of us can afford to spend sort of like you know 50 100 pounds on on a bottle of rum sometimes you have to you know um adjust one's spending shall we say um the um the the, the, the 151 proof well yeah it was it was intense it was alcoholic um and it, it yeah like it was indeed just a higher strength version of 
the um, the standard black seal and um, I suppose I su if you're going to buy the black seal you may as well buy the car strength version because it's got more intensity and you can play around with the ABV um, and, and get something to suit yourself and, and, and which I always love I mean you know I, I, I think that's one of the, 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 the key things about um, cask strength or cask proof or whatever you want to call them bottlings is, is the, the flexibility you have with them um, and the um, family reserve, I suppose I have to say I am slightly disappointed in that particular bottling. Um, it, I was expecting a lot more and it, indeed I think it could have delivered a lot more um, complexity. Uh, and you know when you, when you think about it, you know the, the spirit that is going into this particular bottling is you know uh, is quite old you know 16 to 20 years old you know and and and, and I want to taste that age spirit I don't want to just taste a, a mouthful of oak at the end of the day you know and and it's I'm no I'm no different with whiskey or any other spirit uh whether it's American oak sherry cast pork cast whatever I don't really it doesn't matter it's at the end of the day it's all about the balance and I'm sure that you know that the Gosling family and whoever is the, the blender of this this particular uh, bottling are probably going to completely not disagree with me and say I don't know what the hell I'm talking about but um, I just p feel that the, the balance in that particular bottling was was kind of skewed too much towards the wood and not enough towards the spirit but there you go that's that's my personal opinion and um, but overall you know I, I don't think that that what they're what they're bottling is is quality you I I've got no issue with it whatsoever. So, um, so yeah, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll uh, watch next week's when I will be tasting stuff. <laughs> Until then, all that's left to say is good afternoon and good gramming.